Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing well. This is Radhika here again and this video is going to be about how to reduce anxiety in 40 days and in 6 steps. Um, so if you have been through narcissistic abuse in your life, uh, it is possible that you suffer from anxiety. Um, so here are my 6 steps uh, that you can follow for around 40 days and uh, you can observe the result at the end of the 40 days and you know maybe tell me if you want to how how things are progressing if you feel like you are less anxious now than you were before um so yeah step number one is to understand so the first step is to understand what is anxiety so anxiety might look different for different people but i i, I can just explain it to you how i feel it or how I used to feel it when it was at its peak um, in my system. Um, so anxiety for me felt like um, as if my thoughts are going at a speed of like 10,000 thoughts a second, you know. So my brain was literally racing. It could not stay on a thought for more than a second or so, you know, like it's, it's like you just feel your brain makes you completely overwhelmed by the amount of thoughts that it's thinking and uh, what happens to this in response to this is that um, every thought that we have creates a certain um, vibration or you can say current you know like an electric current in your body and when you are thinking too many thoughts in a second uh, your body does not understand what to do with so many impulses that are coming in you know it's like um it's like the circuit of your brain is overworking it's over firing itself and it's going to like at some point um get fried you know and what happens is along with the brain getting fried uh, our nervous system also gets fried because our brain connects to our nervous system and it sends its signals um so you know because of so many signals going the nervous system does not understand what it needs to do um it it's getting too many uh signals it has to do too many things at one time so that is basically what anxiety is it's when your brain is overworking uh for a certain purpose you know and there is a purpose why is it overworking so much um, so that's that's the thing that we actually need to understand that anxiety is in a form a control issue and it's a control issue I say because um, you you might need to do some digging you know to kind of get to this conclusion but it's a control issue because our brain is overworking to kind of either prevent a certain situation from happening or kind of working towards making that certain situation happen so in either case you want to prevent something from happening or you want to make it happen uh, so it's a control issue so your brain is trying to control an outcome of something and because of that your body is taking a hit and oftentimes uh, the brain is trying to control the outcome especially if you're an empath and not a narcissistic person um, the reason for that control is because um, the brain doesn't want to uh, make the heart feel hurt again you know and so the brain is in a way trying to protect the heart and if you're in a narcissistic situation you'll understand this because uh, you might have a weak point or an insecurity or something that you know when when it is spoken about you feel a deep pain about the whole issue you know and uh, when you are in a narcissistic situation the narcissist or the flying monkey they might be bringing up this topic again and again and because of that your heart feels hurt again and again and when the heart feels hurt uh, it this also sends a signal to the brain and then you know the brain has to you know kind of um, uh, lift the person up and make the person happy again so the brain is all 
like kind of trying to protect the heart and because it's trying to protect the heart it's trying to avoid that situation which causes your heart to feel this heartbreak or heartache and that's why it's overworking you know it's overworking like what will happen if they say this and if they say that and then i will so at the end of it all and in the end of all of the these what ifs what you will feel in the end is hurt and uh, your brain has decided that i'm going to protect my person and to protect you or to protect your heart it's working over time to avoid that situation or you know like it's finding ways to get out of that situation so there's a lot of what ifs and you know um it's it's planning it's doing a lot of over planning to prevent any sort of hurt from happening to your heart and if you have a relationship that is kind of you know getting broken by the narcissistic person in your life then your heart is also then your brain is also trying working over hard to preserve that relationship because even in the end after if the relationship were to break or if you were to again you know feel a separation from that person the same thing will happen your heart will hurt again so the brain is basically trying to protect your heart and i'm talking uh, this is about anxiety especially in narcissistic situations so that's why it's kind of like little more geared towards narcissistic situations um so yeah so understand your anxiety in this way understand your brain understand your heart like why are these things happening to you now and maybe before you were a little anxious about some things which you know everyone is like maybe public speaking or you know if you have to like completely stand out and say something outlandish or you know stand your ground etc you will feel anxiety and that is normal all human beings feel it but i'm talking about anxiety in narcissistic situations which is a little bit different because it's a recurrence it's a recurrent theme in your life every day you will feel anxiety so it kind of um, takes a toll on you after a while uh, so yeah that's the first step like understand why this is happening and understand that it is normal for it to happen in the situation that you are in so there's nothing to be um like feel uh guilty about or shameful about or you know just sad about that why is this happening to me it would it would happen to anyone who is in your situation um so yeah that's the first point which is understand your anxiety then the second point is accept your anxiety so accept that yes i do have anxiety i do get worked up in certain situations i do have um you know my my thoughts are sometimes all over the place sometimes i cannot you know think straight in a line and you know uh, do certain things calmly around certain people or when we are talking about certain subjects i can't i can't function that time to the best of my ability so once you accept your anxiety it will be much easier to kind of work with it um yeah then the third thing is notice the situations that make you feel anxious so uh, note them down you know put write them down in a book so i i can give you some examples just some simple examples so say you are living with a narcissistic person um and you don't like that person but you are still living with them but say guests come to your house and just to show the guests that you are really happy and uh, nothing is wrong and that's very common in uh, narcissistic families they try to hide their unhappiness you know they try to put up a very happy front in front of the world and just show everyone that oh we are super happy we are this nice family you know like the ideal family out of like you know an ideal movie or something like that um so when guests come to your house your anxiety might be at peak because you actually don't like this family you don't like being um you know like something is wrong and you know that and maybe you are the scapegoat and you know that you want to talk about it but you have to you're just playing your part you know being a part of the family being always happy and always cheerful so when guests come to your house because you are not showing your true self the anxiety might kick in even more 
because what are you trying to control here you're trying to control your image that is in front of the world that you know i'm getting along with this family or and even the narcissistic clan is actually quite anxious when they have guests over because a part of them knows that they are not this image that they are trying to show to the world so none of them will be at ease and you you might be picking up some of their anxiety as well so that's one situation where you are trying to preserve something now another situation is like uh, maybe you have a narcissistic friend circle or uh, you know a one person in the friend circle who is very narcissistic and uh, say you've gone through like some rough patch in your life you broke up with someone or um you know they know that you suffered a financial loss or something like that and you know that this one person in my friend group is purposely going to try to bring up this topic in conversation because that's what they do they are like a toxic person but you are a part of that friend circle or maybe they are in your office environment or whatever they are there so you have to deal with them um so in the in this case you know you will always be anxious when you are in that group situation that now the topic will take a turn maybe towards your broken relationship or your broken marriage or you know the financial loss that you suffered etc so your brain might be overly cautious in this situation and firing a lot of neurons to kind of move the conversation away from you know the whatever your insecurity is that um, when that conversation starts your brain will kind of try to move it away and even before it goes there your brain will always be overworking since you are in that situation and the brain has now got triggered that oh his heart his or her heart might start hurting again so the brain is doing everything it can to kind of prevent that from happening um so so these were just some examples so you know whenever this happens uh, be cognizant of these situations and note down like what is making you anxious who are the people who are making you anxious what topics are making you anxious whenever you feel whenever you feel that anxiety come up inside you just write those things down um now my next step is take a break from those situations so to whatever degree you can just take a break from those situations if you are um you know if if um, like my first situation if guests are coming home and you know like this is an anxious situation for you just leave you know when the guests are coming over just go for just tell them that you know i have some errand during that time go go in a park and take a walk you know do something like that or if you have a toxic friend in your office environment who always brings up all these insecurities in you and because of that you can't function well in office then try not to sit with them when you're having lunch and um, let them talk about whatever they want to talk about don't think about that now you think about yourself and your body so if your nervous system needs a break just do that you know just try to avoid these situations these people as much as possible and uh, take that step for yourself um yeah and then the fifth point is um to kind of dissect your anxiety so now that you have in step 3 noticed all these things what makes you feel anxious why do you feel anxious so now uh, sorry you actually noted down what makes you feel anxious so in the in the fifth step of understanding why it makes you anxious you actually have to kind of sit down with yourself and or if you have a good confidant that you want to do this with you can do it with them so you have to kind of go through the reasons and figure out what is making you feel anxious in all of these situations why do you feel anxious so um a lot of times the answer comes up as you know you are trying to preserve the image that you have and um that again comes down to you not accepting a part of yourself you know uh, sometimes like sometimes you might be anxious about like uh your financial situation maybe you are not doing so well uh, monetarily and you are kind of anxious of that yourself and when you are with other people they somehow bring up that anxiety in you so you have to kind of dissect all of these issues and realize that 
for a lot of times the root of the problem actually is in non acceptance of a part of ourself you know so accept that part that you are not accepting and that you feel anxious about and uh, once you accept that part of yourself like maybe maybe you know you are not do- doing that well in your career and that's something that you feel anxious about so just kind of accept that part that okay in in now right now in my life i am not doing that well in my career so i accept that but that doesn't mean that's my permanent situation you know i am going to do better so when you kind of self coach yourself over these topics of anxiety you will be able to kind of get past them and then even if someone talks about uh you know like your financial situation like oh you don't have a good car or something like that you will be totally fine with it you will be like yeah i don't so what you know so uh, it all comes down to self acceptance of some parts that you are not accepting right now and kind of working on accepting them and try to do this as much as you can for the next 40 days especially if you're suffering from extreme anxiety after a narcissistic narcissistic situation um because many times like the narcissist must have brought out so, some of these issues to the forefront you know and that causes more anxiety and then you see that reflected everywhere else in different groups as well so um so that that sometimes can happen you know because uh, what we want what we want healed inside sometimes appears to us outside in a lot of different situations different ways in life and all these are actually signs to you that you need to kind of address something inside you that you have you might have been putting it you know little bit on the side and that needs to be addressed right now so so yeah these are the five points and then the sixth point is um, a, a meditation which is extremely useful for anxiety and i cannot recommend this enough you know like this meditation is simply amazing um i'll add a link to the meditation below it's called a uh, sat nam that is the mantra that you pronounce uh, when you are meditating with this mantra and uh, what it means is it means um birth life death and rebirth so it's a completely um grounding meditation it grounds you in this earthly reality and it will just give you a great sense of calm and uh try to do this for 40 days it's pretty easy uh it's not physically taxing in fact it's so relaxing um i do uh suggest that don't do this uh, uh when you start your day though because uh, sometimes it can be so relaxing that it, you might not be able to work after doing this meditation and um, your brain will get so relaxed that you you do, just don't want to think after that you know you just want to go to sleep or lie lie you know on on a beach and just enjoy the world so it will put you into that relaxing space of mind maybe not right away if you have anxiety it will take some time maybe after 15 20 days you will reach that stage where after this meditation it's just so difficult to think about anything um at all <laughs> and you just want to relax um so yeah so these were my six points and i hope this helps you in some way and if you have anxiety issues i hope it helps those issues and uh, please do like comment and subscribe and share these videos as always i wish you all a lot of love and a lot of light thank you bye